Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. Well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The topic of my teaching this morning is the glory of God. We're going to look at the glory of God this morning. And I'd like to start by going to Exodus chapter 33. But I'd like to mention, this is a time where Moses asked to see the glory of God. He asked God, he said, I want to see the glory of God. It's really amazing. And so in chapter 33, we're going to start in verse 18. And it says, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. This is Moses asking God, he says, I want to see your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim thee, I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold. There is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand, which passes by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts but my face thou shalt not see. That's quite a record, huh? It's a wonderful record. But one of the things we have to recognize that God is spirit. He has no hand. He has no face or form. But what this is, this is showing Moses that he will let him know as much as he can about him. And that he will place him in the rock. And he'll put his hand over the rock and let Moses, so he can't see his face. That's not literal. It's figurative. But we understand that. And when he passes by, he'll see his back parts. So he'll get to know about the glory of God. The word glory by uh, Bollinger is heavy or weighty. Heavy or weighty. And it takes a little bit of thinking about that, weighty or heavy, but you know what he means? He's a heavyweight. (laughs) And one way to understand that, we know what a lightweight is, right? Not much glory there. He's a lightweight, but heavy, weighty. You know what I always looked at the word glory as? Credit. We give God the credit. You know what I mean? We give him the credit. We give him his rightful place, his rightful due. But let's go to Exodus in verse in chapter 34 and read a little more in verse 29. It says, And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in Moses' hand. And when he came down from the mountain, that Moses was not that his that the skin of his face shone. While he talked with them, it says here that the face shone, it shined. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh unto him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. Hmm. And afterwards, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them the commandment, all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had 
done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off. He only had the veil on them and with them until he came out. And when he came out and spake unto the children of Israel, that which he was commanded, and the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. In other words, when he was in front of God, he didn't have the veil, but in front of the children of Israel, he wore that. This must be some way that God works with people in their minds for his skin to shine like that. I think of I think of this. We have the internet. We, you guys out there can see my image, but you're not really seeing me. You're just seeing an image of me on the Zoom, right? Here, you guys can really see me. But anyhow, it's God can do so much better than the internet. So much better. Jesus Christ, the they, people saw the vision of Jesus Christ throughout the book of Acts mm -hmm. and other people like Ananias and others. God is able to work with people so they could see things. Mm -hmm. And here God is working on those people that they see, hey, th his face is shining. Mm -hmm. His face is shining, which is pretty neat. So the children of Israel, they could not stand to see the glory of God, how big it was. You know, today, the glory of God is available to us. But not all of the glory of God is available to us. We can't stand to see it all. But you know who's in charge of how much you see? You are. We're in charge of what we can see. What we'd like to see at times we have to say, hey, God, can you cool it? I can't quite. It's just too much for me. So what is the glory of God? Well, part of the glory of God is the knowledge of God. As you learn God's word, you see what he's done, what he's accomplished, how he works with his son, Jesus Christ, the things that are in God's word. And the more we understand, we, we can see more of the glory. We can see more of the glory and partake of more of the glory, which is pretty neat. And that's why we can continue to grow. We can continue to handle more glory. Ever been in a teaching where you said, wait a minute, slow down. This is too much information. I have, you know what I mean? But you know who decides that? We do. Then later we'll work in the word, we can grow a little more. That's why we just keep growing with God because it never stops. Mm -hmm. More glory of God is made available to us. And who's in charge of that? We are. Go back to Exodus 33. I want to go to verse 11. 33, 11 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend you know what you can do you can go to god and say god what about this whatever is on your heart teach me god i need to know more and grow with god that's the glory of god in my teaching i had all kinds of uh, verses in psalms where we're to seek the glory of god we seek God and his knowledge, the glory of the heavens above. It was just tremendous stuff that's available. But let's go to Ephesians and look at what it says here. In Ephesians chapter 3, in verse 20, very famous verse to many of us. <laughs> now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Unto him be glory 
in the church by Christ Jesus. There's the glory there. As we know more, we can see more of the glory. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. More glory available to us. We can see more of the glory of God. Let's go to 1 Peter in chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4 in verse 11. And it says, if a man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. And that's another way of saying of the word of God. It's the oracles of God, the words of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be what? Glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Pretty wild, huh? Yeah. See, the more, you know how, how God is glorified as we continue to grow with God. And we speak with one another the word of God. The glory of God being manifested. That's what I'm trying to show you here a little bit. Go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians right after Romans. And I want to start in chapter 1 and just read a little section here of God's word. And to see the glory of God and what we can do. I'm going to start in verse 17. It says, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. What he's going to teach, Paul's going to teach the oracles of God, the word of God. That's what he's saying. For the preaching of the cross is to them that, that perish foolishness. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to speak the word of God. We don't care if it's foolishness to them. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. It's the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And I would say, duh. <laughs> yeah, he has. He's made the wisdom of this world pretty foolish. For after that is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of the world says there is no God. <laughs> It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Pretty wild, huh? See, the world thinks that preaching is foolish. They think if you speak the word to somebody, that's foolish. But God chose the foolishness, which it isn't, by the way, of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the, G the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. See, God isn't foolish. Even the most foolish thing that God could ever come up with is wiser than men. And the weakness of God, God is not weak, is stronger than men. For ye, ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many my, mighty, not many noble. And it says our call is just get rid of that. That's, that's, that's wrong. Everybody's called. Everybody can get born again. Anybody can, if they want to hear it. Even the wise, the noble, the mighty, everybody can get it. 
but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. The base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. Yea, in the things which are not to bring to nothing things that are. See, God is a miracle working God. God takes care of us no matter what the world can do. I do not look at the world for my right. If I did, I'd be socially aware of everything that I might do and say, I don't care what the world has to offer. I just don't that no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh, nothing that I do with the five senses, but of him, God, are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom. We, are, we got the wisdom of God now because now we have Holy Spirit and we got word of wisdom and the righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that's what we got now. That according as it, is, as it is written, he that glorifieth, let him glorify, let him glory in the Lord. In other words, God's good. We're happy that he is. <laughs> We're happy that it is. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 9, because this section here I love also. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. God has given us great and precious promises, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things. See, it is so great when we get born again and we receive Holy Spirit, then we can start to understand the things of God. Without Holy Spirit, you cannot understand the things of God. Yea, the deep things of God. See, that's what Moses wanted to know. He wanted to know the deep things of God. God said, I'll do my best. Put you in the cleft, put his hand there, see my back parts, you know. But Moses, saw God face to face as a friend. We can do the same. The deep things of God. Verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of the man which is in him? This is talking about the soul life of a man. In other words, a man knows what's in his own heart. That's basically what it's saying. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. That's why if you don't have the spirit, you can't know God. You can know, you can watch all the movies and stuff, but you don't know the spiritual, the deep things of God. That's what Moses wanted to know. Verse 12 it says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the, the spirit which is of God, that we might what? No. Know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not with the words which man's wisdom teaches. And if you want to see that, just turn on the news. <laughs> and you can get all that worldly wisdom. Or talk to anybody at any workplace <laughs> or any place you've ever been who's part of the world, and they'll give you the wisdom of the world. I don't care about the wisdom of the world. How can it help me? But which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And that's one of my favorite things to do in life is to sit and talk with one of you about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. As we compare spiritual things, you, we talk to each other about the spiritual things. It's just, it's just wonderful. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. When I used, when I was out, you know, really moving the word and talking to people, and someone would say, 
hey, you're just foolish. You know, what you're telling me about God and Jesus Christ, that's just plain foolish, you know? And I go, man, you're proving the word to me. <laughs> Thank you. Because the word says the natural man's, and I would take my Bible and show him this verse. Of course you don't understand the things of God. They're spiritually discerned. You're a natural man. You're getting all your wisdom from the world. And that wisdom doesn't work. But the natural man receiveth not things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. We judge all things because we have the spirit of God. And we can always ask God. See that? We can say, God, I don't understand what this is about. Yet he himself is judged of no man. That's why I don't care what the world says about my righteousness. I believe what the word says about my righteousness. Why should I go to the world to figure out why I'm righteous? For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Is any of these guys going to God to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Pretty wonderful. I like that stuff. Go to 2 Corinthians. Go to second. We gotta go to second. Um, chapter two, verse fourteen. I just want to point these out. We have looked at these recently. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. That's all I want to read of that verse. But that's pretty cool, huh? Always causes us to triumph. Look at verse sixteen, the very end of verse sixteen. That's all I want to read there. And who is sufficient for these things? You guys want to triumph in all things? Well, who is sufficient for these things? Well, chapter 3 is tells us. And I'm going to start in verse 4 of chapter 3. But, you know, a Bible student would read this whole thing, learn it all. But verse 4 says, and such trust we have through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient to think anything of ourselves. Who's sufficient for these things? Well, not us. But our sufficiency is of what? God. That's the glory of God. The knowledge of God. Who also has made us able ministers. Who's able ministers? You guys. All of us. Of the New Testament. Not, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stone, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which was to be done away with. That which the children of Israel could not look at was that administration was to be done away with. And they couldn't even look at his face. How shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious? What we have is better. If the ministration of condemnation, that was what the old administration was, be glorious, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Our ministration exceeded in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. That old one was glorious, right? But it had nothing compared to this glory that we have now with Holy Spirit on us. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. 
you know something in this room here, we got lamps in here and we can see pretty good. But if we were to take those uh, shades and put them up, we'd be flashed out. Wouldn't be able to see the video well. That's why we put all these shades down. Not because I want, I don't want to see the beautiful view, is because I want every one of us to see one another. See, the light is more glorious. The sun is more glorious. Hey, you ever uh, gone by a football stadium or a baseball stadium at night and they have those lights? Those lights are really powerful. You can see everything. You can see that little baseball. You know what I mean? The, the players can. And we can, too, if you're there. If they happen to leave the lights on at the stadium and at noonday you were to drive by, you know what? You would hardly notice those baseball stadium lights. More glorious. So that's what it's saying. We have is more glorious. What we have available to us is more glorious. Verse 12, see, it says, seeing then that we have such hope, we use plain, great plainness of speech. I love this, great plainness of speech. Mm -hmm. Not as Moses, which had a veil over his face, that, to, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. In other words, the word of God that they knew and understand was this much. It's like the lights in this room, just lamps. But we use great simpleness of speech. We just plainness of English. We say, look, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, there's that word glory again. I'm going to tell you something. If you did a search on glory, you would st I'd still be studying it if I started six years ago. You know what I mean? It is used so many times. Glory, the glorious of God, God's glory. Oh, the hope of glory. Don't, don't mention all the glory. Okay, go ahead. But it, it is that, that wonderful. Verse 13, not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is, was, which is abolished, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. In other words, that's why I said at the beginning, we can see as much glory as we want. And who decides? We do. That's it. And no matter how much you have today of your understanding of the glory of God, you can increase in it. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The spirit of the Lord is another way of saying Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Christ in you is another way of saying it. Mm -hmm. When you got that, there is liberty or freedom. But we all, with open face, beholding as in the glass, the glory of the Lord. You know what that is? That's the word of God that we put on in our minds. There's nothing better to understand. The world thinks that this is foolishness. This is foolishness. That's what they say. Oh, yeah, you think you can heal and live abundant lives. Only if you're smart enough and you get the right breaks <laughs> and you're lucky. <laughs> I don't believe that. Are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. See, this book is, and these words are spiritual, written by spiritual men and women. And we can understand them and tap into them and know what we have. So 
I'm just so very blessed with that. I guess the last verse I'd like to read is in chapter four, verse seven. It says, but we have this treasure, Holy Spirit, in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Mm. We have always got to remember that we are not sufficient of ourselves ever. Our sufficiency is of the Lord. That's why we always give God the glory or the credit or the weight. Pretty neat. The glory of God is yours. You can have as much as you want. Sit down and eat. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com for show notes. While there, sign up for our newsletter, grab the freebies, and check out all that Reverend Steve Janes has available. Steve has plenty to give, audio and video teachings, articles, blogs, and biblical study books, all there to help you continue to grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All keys to help you live the life you've always wanted to live.